Why don't we explore Venus? Oh, Mr. Banana, space exploration is just the coolest, right? Going to a space station, going to the moon, heck, one day even going to Mars. With people, we mean. There's so much excitement out there if we're just willing to look, right? But a big question remains. Why are we ignoring one of our nearest celestial neighbors? That's right, Venus is right there. Yes, Mars is all red and pretty and maybe hosted life a long time ago, blah, blah. But Venus has pressure and poison gas, and what's underneath all of that? Well, grab your rocket, Mr. Banana, because we're going to blast off and take a closer look and hopefully answer, why don't we explore Venus? Okay, first off, before we get any further, we actually have explored Venus in the past. Yes, it's true. In fact, back in the day, Venus was the first place that humanity reached for when we finally had the technology to get to space. That's because Earth and Venus are pretty much twins. Fraternal twins, maybe, but they're alike in gravity, size, density, even physical makeup. So of course it was the first place we wanted to take a look at, right? Because at some point, little old Earth became a planetary paradise for life, and Venus became, well, pretty much the opposite of that. Seriously, it has sulfuric acid clouds and its surface is 850 degrees Fahrenheit, which is even hotter than Mercury. You know, the little planet even closer to the big burning ball of gas that's our sun? But wait, Mr. Banana, didn't we say that we had explored Venus before? That's right! In 1982, the Soviet spacecraft Venera 13 was the first lander to actually touch down on the surface of Venus. It was only designed to last a half an hour on the planet. That's just how destructive Venus is. But it surprised everyone by last a full two hours. Great job, Venera 13! So, what did it discover? Well, here's the rub. Documentation on the mission is limited because it took place during the former Soviet Union, and they were not fans of sharing knowledge and information. But while Venera 13 was on the surface of Venus, it did a lot of work, including taking panoramic photos and sending 13 color photos and 8 black and white photos of the planet back to Earth. Venera 13 also drilled into the surface and did analysis of the soil. Venera 14 landed on Venus's too and lasted 57 minutes. But since then, nothing has touched Venus's surface. Which is too bad because Venus has a lot of information <laughs> that could help us understand climate change and the formation of our solar system, etc. For example, Venus once had an ocean on its surface, which meant that maybe, at one point, it contained life. And even though we're obsessed with finding planets that currently or recently contain life, hence why we love Mars and Europa so much. Which, yes, they're pretty cool. It's also important to understand the planets that might have had life a long time ago, and how long they were able to sustain it. And the real kicker, Mr. Banana, is that it's actually easier to get to Venus. Yes, it's true! It's why so many space missions use Venus as a gravity booster when traveling elsewhere. Like Mars. It's practically right next door, and we're mostly ignoring it. Why? Well, money is always an issue, of course. We as humans just don't care quite as much about exploring space as we used to. Not that we couldn't care again, we just have to make the effort. And even though it's easier to get to Venus, it's actually much easier to explore Mars, because it doesn't have all the horrible things that Venus has. Mars won't melt lead, which means rovers that land there can survive for decades, not just minutes. Also, too, Mars is, well, romantic. No, Mr. Banana, we don't mean in that sense. What we mean is that we know one day, and probably one day soon, a human will walk on the surface of Mars. Heck, one day we might even settle Mars! That's not in the card for Venus or at least not on the cards anytime soon, with the level of technology our species has. And, of course, we're obsessed with looking for extraterrestrial life, which is why our space missions are so focused on finding water. Because where there's water, there might be life! There is no water on Venus, and there hasn't been for a long time. And even the clouds probably don't even have bacteria in them. Oh, Venus, you <laughs> deadly little beast! But a bigger problem is, because we haven't been focusing on Venus for, well, quite a few years, the science community's focus on Venus has shrunk, which means we're in real danger of losing the skills and knowledge we would need to go back to Venus. If we don't use it, we lose it in regard to planetary exploration. And it would be a real shame to lose what we know about exploring Venus just because we've shoved it aside for Mars and the Moon and Europa and nearby asteroids. Granted, those things are interesting too. We should definitely be exploring them. But we don't have to do so at the expense of Venus. But don't worry, Mr. Banana, there might yet be hope. 
Europe and Japan launched orbital missions to Venus in 2005 and 2010, so it hasn't been completely forgotten. And NASA and the Russian space agency Roscosmos are teaming up to discuss a new type of Venus mission, a lander that could last on the planet's terrifying surface for not just minutes, or hours, or days, but maybe even months! And if we can do that, well, maybe we can solve some of the weirder mysteries about Venus and learn more about our galaxy and universe, and, in the end, us by doing so. Right, Mr. Banana? Right. If you love learning about why we don't explore Venus, don't forget to click like and to subscribe! And let us know in the comments what you'd like to know about Venus!